Uh, meantime, of course, uh, the way that this country is battling the coronavirus pandemic is weighing in on basically every piece uh, of our world right now. And that was very much the focus of uh, the testimony we got from Fed Chair Jerome Powell yesterday, along with Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin in front of the House Financial Services Committee. He pegged the full economic recovery in this country to the handling of the pandemic itself. Here's what he had to say about that. The path forward for the economy remains extraordinarily uncertain and will depend in large part on our success in containing the virus. A full recovery is unlikely to occur until people are confident that it's safe to engage in a broad range of activities. The path forward will also depend on policy actions taken at all levels of government to provide relief and support the recovery for as long as needed. All right, so joining us more on what steps the Fed, as well as what other fiscal measures might need to be taken here as we see this pandemic again turn in the wrong direction, uh, is Danielle DiMartino Booth, CEO and Director of Intelligence for Quill Intelligence, as well as a former Fed advisor. Uh, Danielle, thanks again for, for chatting with us on this. I thought it was pretty interesting uh, to, to not hear Fed Chair Powell get a little bit more grilled on the moves that they announced recently, uh, saying that they're going to be uh, buying bonds directly from companies that wasn't really a point of interest in that hearing. But what's your take on how he's been navigating all this so far? Well, it was a bit disappointing to not hear anything out of Congress, especially because so many of these liquidity facilities have really not been used. They have not been successful. Uh, we saw that the Paycheck Protection Program went away with 140 some odd uh, billion dollars not deployed. So clearly the Federal Reserve can step up and do more. Uh, but again, these hard questions were not pressed of Chair Powell. And it goes to show you kind of where the, the where the thinking is right now. There's also something to be said for the fact that we're all preoccupied, as Dr. Sag was just explaining, with the devastation, not just on the health side, but on the economic side of what this is doing. Goldman Sachs came out with a fresh report that shows that if we came out with, with nationwide requirements to wear masks, you would tack back on 5% of GDP that is coming down right now uh, because there are so many states having to retrench and reclose. Yeah, you talk about how, how much is being done and then also how little is being done at the same time. It's, it's kind of odd to pair the two because we've seen so much uh, passed in terms of stimulus here. But one key difference that uh, Chair Powell did raise in the hearing was that it's very different what we're going through right now than back in the Great Financial Recession. When you think about that, he was defending the banks here as a source of strength in this crisis, unlike the last one when they were the source of weakness. Uh, I want to get your, what's your take on the way that they have stepped in here to ensure that strength by making the banks here suspend uh, share buybacks in the third quarter and capping dividends, but is there more that they could be doing or in case we see the case count turn in the opposite direction here and add stress on the banking sector? Well, I, I don't think I'm alone in expressing a little bit of concern that unlike the Europeans, we did not totally suspend dividends. Uh, they took it one step further and there is something to be to be said for, sh to, for shoring up your capital cushion at a time when it looks like the pandemic is actually worsening here in the United States. I would add to that, that that U.S. banks are not necessarily as strong as advertised by the Federal Reserve because of their concentrated exposure in many cases to the commercial real estate industry, which is not getting any better when you hear when you when you read headlines like City is planning on delaying plans to reopen 14 offices in 14 states. That's not going to, to do a lot for commercial real estate, some of these banks really are more exposed than I think what the Federal Reserve is willing to own up to at this point. We're going to find out. And when we think about how the Fed's thinking about all this right now, of course, uh, we'll get Fed minutes here uh, in just a bit. But when we think about uh, what we'll learn from that, I don't know if it's going to be another one of those exciting Fed minute reveals since uh, we just heard from Jerome Powell. But curious if there's anything that you're really expecting from that and what we might uh, want to read into there, maybe perhaps around yield curve controls. A lot of people still waiting on that. Well, you know, I think when it comes to the subject of yield curve control, that investors just want anything. They want more of anything. You, you can fill in the blank. You could call it yield curve control. You could call it negative interest rates, which the Fed won't do. But because yield curve control is kind of it's, it's kind of amusing because where are they going to where are they going to anchor the 10 year benchmark Treasury yield at half a percent? The, the deal with yield cur curve control typically is that you need to get yields down, but that's not where we are right now, which is why I think New York Fed President John Williams yesterday said that it was still being discussed. 
more than anything else, I look to these minutes as being extraordinarily dovish and reflecting what Powell said in his last press conference, that the Fed is not even thinking about thinking about raising interest rates. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.